Hello everyone, this is Fabio Lion and welcome back. And today we're going to do a good old game discussion video. I haven't done one in a while because I've been very busy. Um, uh, but I finally managed to finish a game. Finally! Hallelujah! I know. Um, today we're going to talk about a game I'm very excited to talk about, actually. Since uh, this is a, g a game discussion like one year in the making, basically. I should have finished this one at least a year ago when I started playing it. But for some reason I got distracted with something else. And this game has been waiting patiently for me. And recently I saw it, it's like, oh, I need to play you. It was just like calling at me. And the game is 7 Dragon 3 Code VFD, as you can see on the 3DS. Uh, the fourth game in the 7 Dragon series, now owned by Sega, though originally developed by Imagi Poch. Imagi Pooch? I'm not sure about the name. Uh, which, as we know, it got. Uh, went under in 2015 or something, I guess, some years ago. Um, and this was developed by Sega, so, and it's the fourth, and I guess con last game in the Seven Dragons series, I mean, uh, by the way it ends, I don't know how we're going to get a, a Seven Dragon 4, but even though I would love it, but I'm jumping too far ahead. So Seven Dragon 3, Code VFD. Um, as I said, I started this game last year. And uh, since the first moment, I was really, really getting into this game. I really liked its presentation, its gameplay style, the story, everything about it, the music. It was a really cool game, but then, I don't even remember what, but I started to play something else, and I just keep pushing playing Seven Dragon, but uh, I don't know why I saw it. Maybe I was playing, again, I don't remember what. I was playing something, and I saw Seven Dragon, I was like, I need to finish this game because I really enjoyed it, what I played. Because back last year, back then, last year, I think I played about, let's say, 12 to 15 hours. And this game is not very long. It's a, it's a decent sized RPG. I think I, I, I'm not sure. I think I managed to clock around 40 hours, let's say, something like that, which is a decent side game, of course. For some reason, it's not the first time it happened, for some reason, at first I was thinking that this, is going, this was going to be a huge game, like 70 hours, 80 hours or something. No, it wasn't, but that's nothing wrong with it, of course. Um, it's not that the biggest the RPG, the better it is, not at all, actually. Um, where do we start with Seven Dragon 3? Start with the story. It takes place in Tokyo in in twenty one and double in twenty one zero zero. I think it's the date, like twenty uh, second uh, century or something. Um, and uh, it, if I remember correctly, it takes place uh, a century or a bit, le maybe eighty to a hundred years after the events of Seven Dragon twenty twenty part two, which is the third one. So, as I, as I mean, just to make a bit of order here, Seven Dragon started on the DS with Seven Dragon, then it moved to the PSP with Seven Dragon 2020 and 2020 Part 2. Seven Dragon 3, four game in the series, it's a direct continuation of the 2020 saga. Um, so, yeah, I guess 80 years after the events of 2022. Um, so, and the main focus is on your character, since you customize your main character to look whatever you like. You can customize his appearance, which, actually, let's start, you can customize the class of your main character, um, and in, like, depending on the class, you can customize its appearance between, like, a couple of choices, really. Let's, um, so there are, how many classes at first? Four, I guess. I think four or some, something like that. Like there is a uh, samurai, god hand, uh, agent, and duelist. I think those are the main, the first four classes that you can you can you have at the beginning of the game. Then you can unlock more progressively through the game, up until I guess you have eight classes. I think should have. I should have remembered it better, but it, it, 
the thing is you have several classes you can choose you can customize your character and characters because everything concerning your main core party is customized so you can choose for each character the classes the appearances the voices even though it's not a really voice acting heavy game there are like a lot of voice acting in this game voice actors involved with this game but just for like some voices here and there like grunts in battle or some words here and there but not really heavy in the voice acting department though it's pretty good like for example for my main character i had a male samurai dual wielding male samurai which is a very well balanced kind of uh warrior class uh, and the voice actor, just in, for you anime fans, is the same guy who voiced Rorono at Zoro from One Piece, of all things. So I say, oh, that's that's a cool, that's very nice, that's very neat. Um, so basically, you have this character that you can create and customize as much as you want, um, who wants to basically become involved with this very, very popular video game. It's called the... Ah, oh, what's the name? Oh my god, I should have remembered this better. Uh, Seventh Encounter, I think? I might be wrong with the names, but there is this big video game, very popular, created by a company called Nodens, that I remember. And in going there, you encounter another character called Mio, and that's basically what sparkled the story, because basically she has health problems due to a, like a sickness that it's... Uh, Plague in the world, basically called the Dragon Sickness, which is caused by the Dragon's invasions of the previous games. Um, and basically, you start get around, you get along well, and she decided to kind of help you improving your experience with the Seven Encounter by navigating your party. So you have to form a party, goes into the video game, which you realize it's actually a test by the video game company Nodens because they're actually the the video game company is just like a sort of forefront, it's a, almost a cover for the real uh, activity, which is dragon hunting, actually. So basically, uh, through the main people in that company, which uh, they, they know that a new dragon invasion is coming, lead, that will be led by the ultimate dragon, the seven dragon. So it's their task in order to preserve humanity, to defend humanity against the dragons and defeat them once and for all, is to gather specimens from the seven true dragons, so the most powerful dragons in existence, in order to complete a project called the Dragon Chronicle. Then and only then, they will be able to get rid of the dragons. So this is the basic story of the game. Uh, very cool element in this story is the fact that you can, th you can travel through time, you can go to the past and to the future. So you can go to Atlantis in the past, where you met uh, an extinct race, actually, which I guess they were a part in the previous games, actually I guess they were, because it's told in the story, uh, called the Lucier, actually, which are sort of like cat-like people, especially um, for women. They have like very noticeable cat's ears like from their air or something like that and on the other hand in the f you can go to the future of this place called eden so traveling through times to fight dragons in the past in the present in the future and at, at the beginning of the game your the task seems really really daunting and huge because you have like hundreds of dragons that you need to kill and I have to tell you, when by the end of the game I was left with just like five dragons or something, I was really getting excited. I was like, oh my god, I'm almost there. And that's just the, the general idea of the story. And uh, let me tell you, I, I think I've like oversimplified it and just to really summarize it. But uh, the more you get into it, especially I would say like once you start traveling through time, getting acquainted with, with this different people, these different characters, and then there is a big thrust in the story. I would say it's like the final third act of the game. Uh, the story gets really good, actually. The, the, the general idea is always there. It's completed in the Dragon Chronicle, so that you can defeat the dragon, get rid of the dragon sickness, which is actually destroying mankind. It will, it's because it's a sickness without any possibility for cure. If you got the dragon sickness, you're going to die. So the only way to save humanity is 
gather the, the specimens to complete the chronicle and defeat the seven dragon. That's the, that's the objective of the story. But throughout these the various chapters of the game, a lot of things happen. Because there is a government agency, ISDF, involved with basically the military that have created these sort of artificial humans in order to fight the dragons in different ways. And you're introduced to two key characters, Yorimoto and especially Yuma, who will assist you progressively throughout the game. So, let's move on because I don't want to give any more spoilers if I have gave any. So, let's talk about the characters because there is a lot to say about this. Because I've mentioned that and kind of explained before that your, your main character, the protagonist and the party members are entirely 100% customizable. So you create them at the beginning. You can create your entire party at the beginning of the game, basically. You can have up to nine party members uh, divided into three teams of three people each. And that's it. So in battle, you have like your front row of three party members. And if all three of them are, are killed, it's game over. So there is no... At first, I was expecting, like, if the front row gets annihilated, the second one takes place and so on until all nine characters are killed, but that's not the case. But it doesn't really matter, because, like, for example, each turn, like, the, uh, the other characters, like, they're building, like, um, let's call them action points, even though they're not, like, that's by using like the stylus you can select the characters like at the beginning of your turn they will perform an attack in to support um the main party in battle so but apart from that you can talk about that in a gameplay segment but uh the characters as i say the main characters of the game are actually customizable and that's one of my main complaints in a way because i have a beef to speak like with uh silent protagonists it's something that i cannot I don't like it very much because I think silent protagonists it's it's it it doesn't really work to me in the overall enjoyment of the story because you just have this tool of a character that doesn't talk. I know that originally it was intended to be in a way that you're more connected with the characters, you are the character, but you also need to to have that to work, you also need amazing side characters that kind of compensate for the silence of the protagonist. And you don't have that for the party members, so that's a bit of a problem. But at the same time, you have interesting NPCs in this game. They could have been developed better in certain cases, sure. But uh, I think for the most part, they're very likable characters. And the, my main question is that why can they, they be my other party members? Because they kind of reflect like the other classes that you progressively unlock like you go to the pass in atlantis you unlock uh two or three more classes now we don't remember but uh the fortune the fortuner and the the rune knight all of that you could have like there are two main characters from atlantis you could have had those as like those two next classes and the same for where you go to the future to eden so that's a kind of a, a weird thing that seven dragon has for it. Uh, it was getting dark here, so I have to turn on the light. Uh, so I was saying, like, since you have silent protagonists and your party is entirely made of mute characters, although occasionally they talk, uh, especially in like big story moments, but uh, I would have preferred to have those NP interesting NPCs such as uh, uh, Ulanya, uh, Eigur, uh, Jill, uh, Silas, Elias, I don't remember very well, uh, Yuma. All of them as playable party members, but they're not all well. But they're nice side characters, some more than others. For example, I think there are some really cool characters in this game. Uh, I probably, I think, one of the best characters was Yuma, for reasons that I cannot really talk because of huge spoilers there. But uh, it's I really like the way they develop him to have, to have him constantly questioning its purpose in life. And... Uh, their relationship with the protagonist and the building up to a certain rivalry there. Really cool stuff. Also other characters, like there's Julieta uh, or Ali. And of course, like Mio, uh, she is a very, very nice and likable character, especially like towards the end of the game, like that you're, you're progressing, like you're getting ready for the final, kind of a 
not the final for a big battle. And uh, I can't say this, even though it's maybe it's a small spoiler there, spoiler alert, I guess. But you, you you're talking to Mio since she, she is your navigator, and basically she knows she's about to die of dragon sickness, and you have this really nice moment of a. Uh, Devoted the relationship between your protagonist and her, so I would I really like that, and uh, especially with a couple of characters, th three main characters I would say, uh, which are connected with boss battles, um, that made me think that because made me think of like I'm playing something really good here because during those boss battles, uh, I was. I was feeling different emotions, like of the anger toward the boss, of like pity towards certain characters, um, all of this. So I was thinking, wow, if I, from a video game, from a boss battle in a game, uh, it manages to trigger an emotional response, that means I'm playing a good game. And that's the power, I think, of certain characters, because maybe this is not... Uh, these characters are not as developed, I don't know, like a Legend of Heroes games or something like that, but uh, it, it, it gets the job done because you care about this character. When the big twist happens, I was like, oh my fucking god, I was really, I really didn't see it coming. I, I, there was something suspicious there with a couple of characters. I said, hmm, something's going to happen or I wasn't sure, but then the big thing happened. I was like, oh my god. Um, but, again, a good cast of characters, I think, could have been better, though. Like, a bit more developed, especially certain characters. Because you have, um, as I said, good developed characters. Like, Mio, it's nice. Yuma, it's a great character, as I said. Ali, Julieta, um, uh, Yorimoto, all of those. Those are really cool characters. But uh, maybe they could have been involved a bit more. Like, for example, the main characters from Atlantis and Eden, they could have been developed a bit more and been part of the story a bit better, I think. Though they, they play their part well. Just all this to say, just I don't, I'm don't i not a huge fan of silent characters, because I think they're just... there's not much squeeze, like, juice to squeeze there for a story. Uh, although, and one thing, you can interact with them during your free time, basically between missions and uh, quests that you can do. Um, you can sort of have date event of sorts, like, because one neat thing you can do is, like, every time you kill a dragon, you get a, a let's call it dragon point. It's not its name, but uh, DZs, I think, are called. So the more DZs you collect, uh, you can then build, you can then build uh, special floors or special structures inside the main base, the Nodens headquarters, like, you can build uh, refugees' quarters, you can build a, a, a library, um, a warehouse, uh, you can improve the shops like for skills and items and all of that. So it's important to kill dragons in this game, because without it you cannot, for example, unlock skills or more powerful weapons and stuff like that. As I said, you can do a lot of quests, side quests here and there, which are always useful because they give you money, points and stuff like that. So try to do that. They're not just there are some fetch quests here and there, but they're not they don't take too much time to be honest. Um, the battle system. This is a Seven Dragon Three. It's a very very old school. Uh, I was about to say strategy RPG. No, it's a turn based RPG. Very classic. It almost looks, for example, like a Dragon Quest Eight kind of game. So. Once you initiate battle, you have like a sort of first-person perspective of the enemies, and once you give an order for an attack or something, you see the character performing the action, like a, an attack, a skill, or something like that. So it's very cool, and of course, like being, I'm a, I'm a sucker for turn-based RPGs. They're still my favorite, and once I started for once once I started it last year, I was like, oh, this is amazing. Because, for example, on the 3DS, early during the year, I was playing Xenoblade Chronicles, and I love that game, and that's an action RPG. Playing this, I was just like, oh, this is perfect, this is just bread and butter to me. Because, I'm, as I said, I love my turn-based RPGs. And um, also, this is a, as I mentioned earlier, it's a class, so a sort of job system 
uh, type of turn-based RPG. So as I said, you can you can form your party at the beginning of the game and progressively you unlock different classes. So you have like the samurais, as I, as I mentioned, like samurai, uh, which you can have like uh, dual wielding or single wielding samurais. They have different skills, even though the basics are similar. You have like uh, uh, the agent, the, the god hand, which is a kind of monk kind of character with like hand to hand combat. The agent has guns. You have like more magic heavy kind of characters. There are some cool classes here and there. Really, really interesting. Um, so you can have a very, very different party. You can like focus uh, on physical attacks or have like, some sort of combination. For example, there is the character of the Fortuner, which is a bit weird because it's not entirely a wizard, but it has like really cool and useful skills, for example, for like healing, uh, like health regeneration, uh, diminishing like finish, uh, physical or magic attacks from the enemy or something like that. Very useful. Though it's not really a healer, it doesn't have a proper cure spell like the, wiz the mage, which is a character you unlock later in the game. Uh, there are more tankish kind of character like the Banisher, for example, which is like big armor and big weapons. That's very cool with bombs and stuff like that. So you can have a lot of customization. You can skip from one class to the other, even though I didn't really mess with that because I was, I have basically one character for each class. So my party was very well balanced, actually. And speaking of gameplay, that's also one thing I've read here and there. Like uh, once I was stuck on certain bosses, just looking for help. Um, uh, I read some people say the game is up, up quite easy. I think it's like it's not too difficult. It's not too easy. I've died here and there, especially, but I think it's a well balanced difficulty. I mean, like uh, normal battles, like with normal enemies, they're easy, of course. Um, like more challenging battles, for example, when you're facing a dragon. Maybe at the beginning they're a bit more challenging because your characters are weaker. By the end, I was just like murdering dragons, like they are. They were just uh, an afterthought, basically. Um, but it's very important to beat them because they give you a lot of experience, skill points, and the, the DZ points. Um, however, some boss battles can be pretty challenging, though. Like, especially some high dragons, so the mm, medium to high classes of dragons. And some big boss battles can be very frustrating. Like, there was a, one dragon, for example, keep hitting my party with, like, instant kill attacks. So I, I, I needed like uh, equipment, so like the right equipment, the right skills, all of that. So it is all, that's also important, which it's not a thing that a lot of RPGs pay attention to. So the kind of equipment you have, it's important against certain bosses. Because a lot of bosses, they always inflict like alterations of status, like poison, burn, confusion, all of that. So you have to, you have to think of what you're doing and equip your party properly for a big battle. Um, and as I said, some boss battles were more challenging, especially some big bosses. Um, though I think it's a general, like, fair game in a difficulty. It's not too hard, not at all, but it's not even, like, too easy. You're going to die here and there. But, for example, during the final battle with the Seven Dragon, I died only once. And you can, like, restart the battle from the beginning. So it's not a big deal. Um, one thing that I have, to, two things actually, I absolutely have to mention, which have made me fell in love with the, this game, and probably with the rest of the series if I ever managed to play them, it's the art style and the music. So let's start with the art style. Um, this game is gorgeous, especially like the character design, it's fantastic. Um, oh, who is the guy? Let's see if I can find it. Ah. Obviously, it's like the only guy, the only name missing from here. But it's a famous, I think it's a mangaka or something like that. Because with the game, I got like this small sort of art book, and uh, I I love this the style of these characters, like their design, especially because it, unfortunately the game doesn't look like this all the time. It has a more like uh, it, it kind of reminds me of a better version of say Final Fantasy IV on the DS. That kind of graphics, but a bit better. So I kind of you know, like this certain sort of classes. It's a uh, design of the monsters. I mean that's really cool, and I love like all this. 
Ugh. Like, the Texas for, like, characters. Because some of the design of dragons were really inventive. Like, there, one of my favorites, always the... There is, a, like, a dragon with a huge ball on its head, and it's just, boom, hits you with, like, headbutts or something like that. Really, really cool. Um, but, no, a really, really cool character design. This style has been constant with the series in Seven Dragon 2020, so this is the third game uh, with this art style, which is really nice. But, of course, I have to mention the music, which it's one of the best soundtrack I've heard this year, basically, or since last year. Um, it's an absolutely beautiful soundtrack, but no surprises because it's done by Yuzo Koshiro. I, didn't re I really didn't know that when I started the game. Then I heard some of the music say, wow, this soundtrack, it's amazing. Who did that? And then you're like, Yuzo Koshiro say, oh, it makes sense, of course. But there are some amazing, amazing tracks here and there, like... It has one of my favorite dungeon music, especially like in Seven Encounters and like the Vermilion Tower, so it's the Tokyo Underground. Um, that music is amazing, phenomenal, which is a, sort of a main theme of the game. Uh, there are some boss battle music which are fantastic, like when you're facing like the fourth true dragon, Hypnos, when you're facing a certain character, and when you're facing the second true dragon especially that battle when i say like the emotional response that was very strong in there because that dragon did something bad and i haven't been this angry with a boss battle like with a boss in a video game in a long time and say okay i'm going to destroy you and in the meanwhile you have that fantastic song in the background it's like this is a great game and i have annihilated the second dragon let me tell you so overall seven dragon 3 code VFD. I think I covered the main and most important elements. Uh, I absolutely love this game. Uh, I liked it when I tried the first time next year, last year. I said I got distracted I, and now I'm like, damn, I wished I finished this last year because I enjoyed every moment of it. Maybe in the grand scheme of things it's kind of a back to basic kind of game. It's it's a simple turn-based RPG, but I really like the story. Uh, the, it has a really cool design. Um, the music is phen absolutely phenomenal. I have to look to buy this. I, I, I wish to buy the soundtrack, actually, now that I think about it. Um, and connected, like, like I love the battle system because it's turn-based, it's job-based. I love both of them. But connected with the story, it's also another thing that I really like about this game. It's its lore. I really want to play the other Seven Dragon games now, but of course they're Japan exclusive, so I, know, I saw some fan translation here and there um, online, but uh, that's not really my cup of tea, my kind of thing. Uh, but, um, God, this art is so cool. Well, but there's got to be a really cool story behind this whole concept, especially the, 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 let's say the trilogy that started with 2020. So 2020, 2022, and... Seven Dragon Three, because the first game, for one to understand on the DS, it's more of an HD and Odyssey kind of game. But I also read there are some connections with the rest of the game, so who knows? But um, I really, I, I was tempted. Like while I was getting close to the end, I saw like Seven Dragon Twenty Twenty on the PSP. It's like a five pounds game on Amazon. I was like, ah, oh, I could buy that for next to nothing just to have it there and not playing, but maybe there is a script online or I can find a translation. So I'm very tempted to, because I want to explore this series more because, as I say, the, the overall story has to be really cool because this was Seven Dragon Three was really cool. I really love this story and this whole world, like the, the way they actually portrayed the dragon, their motivations, the real, the true nature of the dragon, the whole concept of the the high, the, the true dragons actually they're called. So, um, it's really nice. I really like this. I wish to have more of Seven Dragon, to be honest. Um, I don't know. Considering the way it ended, it doesn't really need a sequel because the, it has a really happy ending. Um, but uh, I mean, there are three games before this I can try to play one way or the other. I mean, if I buy the Japanese copies, I, they're very cheap. Um, but also, like, I think this is a relatively small series, and I don't think Sega will actually do a Seven Dragon Four. I would be really surprised. 
Honestly, I don't know how they could do it. I haven't thought about it, but... Uh, and also, like, I think we're damn lucky to have this. Like, it's really, really impressive that Deep Silver actually published Seven Dragon 3, because it's kind of out of nowhere. Like, before this, like, I never heard of the Seven Dragon series. And to conclude this, I would just want to mention, even though I know the term is a bit overused by today's standards, but to me, Seven Dragon 3, it's the perfect definition of a hidden gem. I know, I said this. You probably all heard about it, but uh, who talk about it? No one, basically. I think this is a really niche and pretty fantastic game, actually. If you, la if you like turn-based JRPGs, don't let this escape you, because it's really cool. It's really old school, sure, but it has a really cool story and a really interesting lore behind the story, a fantastic art design, an amazing soundtrack. Plus, who doesn't like turn-based, job-based RPGs? No one. Certainly not this guy. So, all I can say, I mean, I absolutely loved Seven Dragon 3. I'm so happy that I finally finished it. And, uh, yeah, I mean, as I said, it would be cool to have a collection on the Switch, but it's never going to happen. But to have all four games, like, at least the previous three, or the 2020, 2100 saga, 2100, that's interesting. <laughs> but uh, I would love that. It's not going to happen, because as I say, I think it's a pretty small, very niche series, actually. And probably we're damn lucky to have this one. But if you have it, if you are willing to give it a shot, I cannot recommend it more because if you like RPGs, this is a must. That's it about Seven Dragon 3 Code VFD. Uh, thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you next time and take care.